This is a travesty. This is a disaster. This is incompetence on the part of this administration. I feel we have a moral obligation to uh, provide those special immigrant visas. Right now, a war of words over refugees arriving from war-torn Afghanistan. Tonight, our first real insights into what it's like at Fort McCoy. Also, how internet search history is helping prosecutors build their murder case against Chandler Halderson. Plus, you're going to need a doctor's note. Well, how about 500 of them? The unified message Wisconsin doctors want you to hear. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. And thanks for staying with us. Don't settle in just yet. We could be in store for some more severe weather later this week. There are two new alert days in the forecast. Let's get a look at your certified most accurate forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti on the weather patio. Gary? It's very sticky out here. Uh, the humidity levels are high and that could lead to more thunderstorms. Uh, take a look at the alert days that we have in the forecast now for tomorrow and for Friday for the possibility for some strong to severe thunderstorms with high winds, heavy rain being the main threats from, uh, for both days. But it won't be raining all the time. High resolution radar right now, free of precipitation across southern Wisconsin. But just to our south, you can see a cluster of severe thunderstorms that literally developed over the last couple of hours uh, across parts of northwestern Illinois. Right now, I think we'll stay mainly dry tonight. Most of the severe weather threat will stay to our south and west, but we could see severe weather here tomorrow and Friday as well. Temperatures right now are in the middle to upper 80s. Few places like Kenosha right around 90 degrees, but look at the humidity right now. The dew point temperatures are around 70 to 75. Very, very humid out there. So look for temperatures to drop into the lower or upper 60s overnight with some patchy fog. Just a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm toward tomorrow morning, but better chances during the day tomorrow. Some of those could have heavy rain and gusty winds. High temperature at 83. Later on, I'll take a look at a forecast that includes more heat and humidity, but maybe a break as we head into next week. All right, Gary, thank you. Stay alert and up to date on the weather with our first worn forecast weather app. It has hourly forecasts, road conditions, and the latest radar. You can download it for free in your phone's app store. Just search WISC weather. There are now just six days left to get about 1,500 Americans and many more Afghan allies out of Afghanistan. Thousands are leaving Kabul's main airport every day. Day, but many more are still waiting. In the past 24 hours, 19,000 people have been evacuated. And since August 14th, over 82,000 people have left the country. For the remaining roughly 1,000 contacts that we had who may be Americans seeking to leave Afghanistan, we're aggressively reaching out to them multiple times a day through multiple channels of communication, phone, email, text messaging to determine whether they still want to leave uh, and uh, to get the most up-to-date information and instructions to them for how to do so. President Biden says the U.S. is on pace to complete its evacuation mission by August 31st and doesn't plan to have troops in the country past that date, although he has asked for contingency plans in case he determines the U.S. needs to remain longer. And as those refugees make their way to Wisconsin, we're getting first word from the Department of Defense about what it's like inside Fort McCoy. The Department of Defense says families are being kept together, and we do know there are women and children in these groups. There have been four mosques set up for refugees and Task Force McCoy is providing medical screening, including COVID testing for those who arrive at the base. And as we learn more, so do Wisconsin politicians. Governor Evers and a handful of Wisconsin Republicans separately touring Fort McCoy today. We didn't hear from the governor today, but Senator Ron Johnson had plenty to say, very little of it positive. Talil Moladeen was able to ask Senator Johnson about his concerns outside side of Fort McCoy this morning. A tour of Fort McCoy's refugee setup did little to settle Senator Ron Johnson's concerns about the situation. It only takes one failure to destroy this mission. Johnson spoke with reporters for about 30 minutes this morning after visiting the fort with state lawmakers. He criticized the Biden's administration rushed pull out of Afghanistan, calling it a travesty. The mission is to bring American citizens back bring back those people that, that, you know, we want to bring out of danger, that deserve to be brought out of danger. And 
and successfully integrate them to society. Johnson also claims to have inside sources who he wouldn't identify that make him worry about American safety in bringing refugees into Wisconsin. He says there's no foreign plan to screen refugees. Maybe they're taking biometrics now, but you need biometrics having taken beforehand that you can compare them to. Um, it would be nice if we knew everybody had even just an identification card. I'm hearing they don't. Johnson says Fort McCoy has the capacity to host 10,000 people, and right now there are over 1,000 Afghan refugees inside. But Democrats are taking a different approach. Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin reminded people in Madison today that the Badger State has a rich history of taking in refugees. I feel we have a moral obligation to uh, provide those special immigrant visas, and I'm, I'm proud, frankly, that uh, Fort McCoy will be a site where where uh, many of these uh, future refugee status individuals will uh, be welcomed back. State representatives on today's tour said the hundreds of men, women, and children who have already arrived in Fort McCoy were medically screened and tested for COVID, something a Fort McCoy spokeswoman confirmed to us late this afternoon. While Johnson stoked fears over unknowns of who's coming in, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar stressed everyone who makes it through should be welcomed. Here you have a group of refugees coming in um, that uh, will have a lot of skills, actually, um, that I think um, will be not just the right moral thing to do, which Tammy so well pointed out, uh, but also uh, in the long term, a positive um, economically for our country. At Fort McCoy, Tehlin Mahaddeen, News 3 Now. Now there was someone slated to be at that press conference today who was not. We sat alongside Jason Church as we heard from Senator Johnson. Church, an outspoken Republican, former congressional candidate, but he's also an Afghanistan veteran. We cannot let fear be what dictates how we interact with the people who are coming from Afghanistan. I have worked with many of these people. They were willing to die for it. The SIVs I worked with bled with me. At what point are we as a people going to take responsibility for the messes we create? And I think that we can start by the way we treat the people we promised and failed to deliver with respect. And you'll be hearing more from Church on Sunday's edition of For the Record with Naomi Cole. She breaks down the evolving political rhetoric around an issue that veterans say should be above politics. Next at 5, a man charged with his father's death now faces new charges for his mother's murder as well. The latest in the case against Chandler Halderson also has authorities looking at his Google search history. Our Brady Mallory joins us with new details and what he was searching for just before authorities found his father's remains. Brady? Well, Halderson now faces two counts each of first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, hiding a corpse, and providing false information on kidnapped missing persons. Now, this is tied to the deaths of his parents, Barton Krista Halderson. According to newly filed court documents, they're giving us new details about the case. Detectives obtained a search warrant for Halderson's Google account to review searches from June 30th through July 8th. Well, the morning of July 8th, Halderson searched for multiple phrases, including Wisconsin dismembered body found and dead body found in Wisconsin, all within roughly a minute. Well, this case goes back to the beginning of July and has a lot of complicated twists and turns. We have a full in-depth timeline with all the details on our website, channel3000.com. Well, this is just in the Madison School District asking you to check your child's school start times. Now, this is due to the lack of bus drivers in the Madison area. Many, but not all Madison schools are having to change their school start and end time. So the district is asking parents, check their website to see if your child is affected by those changes. COVID cases and hospitalizations are increasing in Wisconsin. In the last 24 hours, eight new deaths were reported by DHS. As for hospitalizations, the seven-day average is at 755, which increased by nearly 150 from yesterday. More people are also in ICU beds, as the seven-day average is now 228 compared to yesterday, which was 185. Those numbers are the highest in the state since early February. Cases in children have also surged over the last month from about 38,000 at the end of July to more than 180,000 last week, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. A rise in cases in kids is causing pediatricians to plead with students, parents, and school staff to follow all COVID safety precautions as students head back to school. Our Jamie Perez shares how nearly 500 pediatricians signed an open letter addressing that issue today. Jamie? 
Well, it's been just within the past few days that they have gathered that many signatures. They said last year we learned how important in-person learning is. They're happy that we can return to that this year, but they do want to make sure that it's being done safely. Now, considering that not all school districts are requiring masks or vaccines, they felt the need to send out this letter as a final plea. We hear all these people who, when they get sick, who've been, who've been deniers of either masks or vaccine, and when they get sick, they then want to say how they were wrong. Sometimes it's too late to say that you're wrong. So they're asking for three main things. One, anyone who can get vaccinated should. Two, mask up. They said it's the only way to further protect those who cannot get the vaccine. And three, keep maintaining at least three feet of distance in those classrooms. They said the risk of getting COVID far outweighs the risk that some people believe comes with mask wearing and getting the vaccine. Jamie, thank you. Since the latest mandatory indoor mask mandate went into effect a week ago, Public Health Madison and Dane County Communications Coordinator Morgan Fink said the department has has received a few dozen complaints so far and is currently processing more. She says they're putting their focus on supporting businesses versus policing individuals. They have not said which businesses faced those complaints. Looks like booster shots will likely be recommended for people who got Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccine. The company says phase two studies show people who received boosters six months after the initial dose showed a nine-fold increase in antibodies from a month after the first shot. That data comes days after the Biden administration recommended booster shots for people who got the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Recipients of those shots become eligible for a booster eight months after receiving their second dose. The first people to receive the J&J &J vaccine are just now starting to hit the six-month mark. About 14 million Americans have been vaccinated with the Johnson & Johnson shot. Moderna has completed its submission to the Food and Drug Administration for full approval of its COVID-19 vaccine. It has requested priority review, but that could still take months. Moderna Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine is already available in the U.S. for people 18 and older under emergency use authorization. The company has also filed an emergency use authorization request for children as young as 12. Earlier this week, the FDA granted full approval for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. All U.S. military members must get the vaccine. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin imposing the mandate after the FDA's full approval of the Pfizer vaccine this week. He wants all military departments to implement the policy immediately. The Pentagon says 68% of active duty forces are currently fully vaccinated. More than 76% have received the first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. Another slight increase in Wisconsinites who are getting vaccinated as 50.9% of the state's population has completed the vaccine series and nearly 69% of residents in Dane County have received their shots. Almost 72% have had at least one shot. An ensemble forecast released by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention today says new COVID-19 hospitalizations will most likely remain stable or have an uncertain trend in the coming weeks. This is the first time the ensemble did not project an increase since mid-July. It predicts there will be around 8 to 27,000 new confirmed hospitalizations by September 20th. The Department of Health and Human Services says more than 100,000 people are currently hospitalized with COVID-19. The agency also reports hospitalizations nearly tripled in the past month and have grown by 10% in the past week alone. An update on the status of Republican State Senator Andre Jacques as his spokesman says he's in stable condition. This comes after the 40-year-old developed pneumonia after testing positive earlier this month. He was then hospitalized on August 16th, placed on a ventilator on Monday. Jacques, the father of six Six children, including an infant, says members of his family also tested positive for the virus. Their conditions were not immediately known. Jacques has opposed mask and vaccine mandates. Ahead on News 3 Now at 5, employees at a local coffee shop are unionizing. We'll tell you which coffee shop that is. That's ahead at 5. Why some educators say students returning in person to in-person learning this fall will have to work harder than ever. That story coming up tonight at 6. Save on the best name brand mattresses with the A1 Instant Rebate with a huge selection in stock now. Your choice, 14-inch firm or plush queen mattress, just $4.99. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. Save online or in-store with the A1 Instant Rebate. I don't just play someone brainy on TV. I'm an actual neuroscientist, and I love the science behind Nareva Plus. Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nareva Plus fuels six key indicators of brain performance. More brain performance, yes please. Nareva, think bigger.
Powerball, the big jackpot game where the next thing you know, it rolls, it grows, and it draws. Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, three days a week at lottery retailers across the state. Wisconsin Lottery. Since 1976, Feldco stood the test of time. It's Feldco's 45th anniversary. Time to get down. To celebrate Feldco's 45th anniversary, get 45% off windows today. That's cause for a celebration. 45% off windows won't last long. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feldco. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on netcredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. All Denny's pancakes are made to order with fresh buttermilk, but this month's Spotlight Stack is a patriot. Fresh, sweet, and full of freedom. New red, white, and blue pancakes. This month's Spotlight Stack. See you at Denny's. <laughs> Mom's gonna kill us. <laughs> Gorilla Super Glues. Of course. Gorilla has a fix for every project. Original brush and nozzle and ultra control gel for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Save now on furniture with the A1 Instant Rebate with a huge selection of inventory available now. Your choice two-piece sofa and love seat or sectional, just $9.99. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. Save online or in-store with the A1 Instant Rebate. Thursday on News 3 Now this morning, how mask policies could change during the school year as COVID cases get better or worse. And Chris Reese is looking ahead to your weekend first born forecast. We'll see you from 4.30 to 7 on News 3 Now this morning. When the Boys and Girls Club of Dane County launched their back-to-school supplies drive, News 3 Now wanted to help and took action right away. And you responded. Thank you for your generosity. News 3 Now, taking action where our community needs it most. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Collectivo Coffee is set to become the country's largest unionized cafe workforce. A decision from the National Labor Relations Board this week will allow baristas, bakers, and other staff to unionize. It follows a long battle between management and organizers. Workers supporting the decision held a press conference this morning. I'm very optimistic. Um, that we can go forward together from this and that workers, not just at Collectivo, not just in Milwaukee, but across the country, um, have hope. Earlier this week, Collectivo's owners posted on social media saying they were disappointed in the decision because they feel the majority of workers did not vote in favor of unionization. Collectivo operates cafes here in Madison as well as Milwaukee and Chicago. If you're traveling on the Beltline tonight and tomorrow night, you might have to find an alternate route. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation plans to close the west westbound lanes of the Beltline from the I-3990 interchange to Highway 51 Stoughton Road from 6.30 tonight until 6 in the morning. Crews plan to continue asphalt paving as part of the Flex Lane project. The interstate northbound exit ramp to the westbound Beltline will also be closed. Well, let's get a look at your certified most accurate weather. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canolti has the forecast. Gary? Boy, it's humid out there, and you would think a thunderstorm could pop up at just about any point, but right now we're dry across southern Wisconsin. However, you go just to our south across northern Illinois, and you can see severe thunderstorms moving through parts of north central Illinois, just south of I-80 for the potential for some high winds of 60 miles per hour. This cluster of storms literally has blown up over the last couple of hours. But you can just see how isolated it is. I mean, the humidity levels are high everywhere, but this thunderstorm cluster is just in one little area here moving eastward, so it won't affect us. The severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center has a, a, a marginal risk for an isolated severe thunderstorm through much of northern Illinois, parts of Iowa, and into southwestern Minnesota for tonight. This is in the vicinity of a uh, front that will actually come through as a cold front tonight, shift our winds around to the northeast, and then start working back northward as a warm front overnight into tomorrow. Tomorrow, as that front continues to 
lift northward. There's a slight risk or a level two risk of severe thunderstorms over southwestern Wisconsin back into Minnesota and Iowa and a marginal risk elsewhere. Depending on when storms fire up, especially if they fire up late in the afternoon, the severe weather threat could be a little bit higher than uh, we have right here. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, it looks like strong winds and heavy rain would be the main threats. Friday, as that front continues to lift northward as a warm front, there's a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms mainly over central Wisconsin for now. But again, this severe weather threat area for Friday will be very dependent on what happens tomorrow. Should we get a cluster of storms tomorrow night that kind of pushes the front a little bit back down to the south, we could see another round of thunderstorms Friday morning and early Friday afternoon before that front lifts back northward. So because of that, we have uh, alert days in the forecast for both tomorrow and Friday. The other issue is heavy rain. Because these storms will be kind of in the same area, and some areas have picked up heavy rain over the last couple of days, some of the uh, future track computer models are showing the potential for three or more inches of rain over the next 72 hours over parts of uh, Iowa and southwestern Wisconsin, maybe east of Madison as well. But again, this is going to really depend on exactly where those storms track. If a few f uh, storms track over the same spot, you might get three, four inches of rain, and then you go 20 miles away, and there might be less than an inch of rain. So uh, because of that, and because of the potential, we have alert dates in the forecast for both tomorrow and for Friday. Again, high winds, heavy rain, the main threats. But three things you need to know in the forecast, as the humidity levels stay high through the weekend, that will lead to some thunderstorm chances. Saturday, probably the least chances for thunderstorms because we'll see the heat expand with high temperatures in the lower 90s, and then dry weather moves in for early next week. Temperatures will be seasonably warm, but it'll be less humid with high temperatures right around 80. Now, part of that because it could be from this mass of clouds that could become a tropical weather system and affect the Gulf Coast region somewhere around Texas or Louisiana early next week. That would slow down the weather systems across the country, cause high pressure to form in our part of the Midwest, and actually clear us out early next week. But right now, we're right underneath the jet stream. That's where the humidity levels are highest, and that's where the thunderstorm chances will be highest over the next few days. Tomorrow, high of 83. Not an all-day rain, but there'll be some showers and thunderstorms, and some of those could have heavy downpours. On future track, maybe a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm toward morning, a better chance tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. Again, some breaks in between the storms. And then on Friday, notice the winds shift to the south and temperatures warm up into the middle 80s. And those rainfall amounts, well, they were just updating right now, but they're somewhere in the neighborhood of about one to three inches. After the alert days, we have uh, the high heat and humidity for Saturday, thunderstorms on Sunday, and then that break for much of next week with comfortable temperatures, maybe a chance of thunderstorms by the next weekend. As we check out first warrant traffic, Again, with the construction on the Beltline, we're still seeing delays on the eastbound Beltline from around Monona Drive back to Verona Road. A few delays on the westbound Beltline. Right now, the eastbound Beltline is a 20-minute commute, 18 minutes back in the westbound uh, side of the Beltline from University Avenue to the interstate. Heading out of Madison, no problems on I-3990 uh, from the Beltline southward to Janesville. US-12 Middleton to Sauk City is a 16-minute trip. And downtown to Sun Prairie, East Washington Avenue and US-151 will take you 17 minutes. That's your news for now, First Warrant Traffic. Okay, Gary, thank Thank you. Just over a week until the Badgers and their fans are back at Camp Randall. But new photos show what the stadium will look like next year. We'll check them out next at 5. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It's time for back to school, so get to Rogan's today for styles your kids will love. Plus, save the receipt and the next pair is half price. Family Savings gets an A-plus at Rogan's. Selection, service, name brands, and the second pair is half price. Visit online at roganshoes.com. Don't wait. Furniture and Appliance Mart's four-day Labor Day preview appliance deals are on now. Save up to half off Labor Day appliance deals. Plus, no interest financing for 18 months on all appliances with no minimum purchase. At Furniture and Appliance Mart, inside Ashley Home Store off the Beltline. When it comes to internet and TV, Spectrum has the competition beat. Really? Can you keep up with all this? Yes. With faster download speeds and better performance, Spectrum is the number one choice for gamers. Switch now with the fastest internet starting speeds for the price, 200 megabits. That's enough speed to game, surf, stream, and more on all your devices. Get Spectrum Internet for $44.99 a month. Call 833-742-4499. Okay, but what about TV? 
It's not easy to find something that works for everyone. Spectrum TV with the free Spectrum TV app lets you watch live sports, local news, and more on your TV and on your devices. And unlike satellite, there's no ugly dish on your roof. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-742-4499. Too bad I'm in a contract. Stuck in a contract? Spectrum will buy it out up to $500. Seriously? And you won't have to sign a new one. Don't wait. Switch today. Awesome. Nice. Yes! Get Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each. Call 833-742-4499. I'm attorney David Gruber. We are proud to have helped tens of thousands of injured people in Wisconsin for more than 30 years. If you or a loved one has been injured, make the right call. Make one call. Trust our hometown firm to get you back in the game with the winning results you deserve. Wisconsin's own Gruber Lopses, proud partner of your Milwaukee Brewers. One call, that's all. At Culver's, we never tire of crafting fresh frozen custard right in our restaurants. As soon as I'm like, who wants Culver's custard? The kids are already running out the door. Hello, everybody. Hi, Here's your custard. custard. Always rich and creamy, always sure to put a smile on your face. It's more than just a special treat. It's creating memories with my children and family time. Is it really good? <laughs> yeah. Family time is custard time. Welcome to Delicious. Ashley Home Store's Labor Day sale starts now. Save up to 60% off holiday doorbusters like these while they last. And five years no interest financing with no minimum purchase. Pay less than $17 a month for a new room you'll love. Going on now at Ashley Home Store. I kept my receipt from the last time I was at Rogan's to save even more and back to school for my kids. The shoes I'm getting today are half price. I get the best savings for my family at Rogan's. Selection, service, name brands, and the second pair is half price. Visit online at roganshoes.com. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Welcome back. We're getting a first look at the future of Camp Randall Stadium, the south end zone at Camp Randall, getting a major makeover. Here's a look at what the new renovations will look like, featuring premium seating along with indoor and outdoor hospitality clubs. The project won't start until after the football season this year, but the renovations are expected to be done by the beginning of the September 2022 season. Well, if you're a teacher looking for a classroom pet this year, how about a 1,500-pound dairy cow? Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin and Discovery Dairy are, are partnering this year for this year's Adopt a Cow program. It lets classrooms be paired with a calf from a Wisconsin dairy farm for free. The program offers virtual chats and farm tours. You can send photos of the calf over the years, over the year, and then give, they give students a deeper understanding of the dairy industry and where our food comes from. And then it all ends with a virtual chat live so that the students then can see their calf live. Of course, by that time, that calf is probably more like 600 pounds versus, you know, 65 to 95 pounds when they're born. The program targets students grades K through 12, but it's also offered to extracurricular groups like the Girl Scouts, who's, or also to kids who are homeschooled or after school groups. You can sign up your classroom by going to discoverydairy.com. And stay with us. We'll have a final check of your first one forecast in just a moment. One of our biggest furniture events of the year, the Labor Day sale at Slumberland. Take an additional 25% off our already low prices. Well, hello, Slumberland. Get your look for less at the huge Labor Day sale at Slumberland. Hobbies, two for six bucks every day. Classic beef and cheddar hog. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. We would never hit 12 drunk. Clutch it up drunk? Not a chance. Do a stoppy drunk? We would never drift drunk. Never drive drunk. Drive sober or get pulled over. 
Shop the big sale at Grand Appliance for exclusive savings of up to $1,000 on qualifying appliance packages from these top brands. Save on top of great sale offers like this Samsung front load washer for just $728 or this LG 25 cubic foot French door refrigerator for just $1498. Shop GrandAppliance.com or your local Grand showroom to save today. Grand Appliance. You make it home. We make it grand. Check out Menard's great selection of flooring options and get 11% off everything. Mohawk Vinyl Plank Flooring is durable, waterproof, and easy to install, making it perfect for any active household. Add warmth and comfort to your home with carpet from Luptex Mills. It's soft and luxurious and comes with a lifetime stain and fade warranty. Update your home's flooring today and save 11% off everything right now at Menard's. Save big money at is your credit score getting in the way of the things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit offer fast and flexible lending. Borrow up to $10,000 and choose repayment terms that work for you. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. All Denny's pancakes are made to order with fresh buttermilk, but this month's Spotlight Stack is a patriot. Fresh, sweet, and full of freedom. New red, white, and blue pancakes. This month's Spotlight Stack. See you at Denny's. I don't just play someone brainy on TV. I'm an actual neuroscientist, and I love the science behind Nariva Plus. Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nariva Plus fuels six key indicators of brain performance. More brain performance? Yes, please. Nariva, think bigger. Incredible savings on mattresses during our Labor Day sale now at Slumberland. Sealy Posturepedic all on sale, starting as low as $4.99. And we're one of the only stores reducing waste through our mattress recycle programs. Shop now at Slumberland. And Gary's back. One final check of the forecast. Well, things are pretty quiet across much of southern Wisconsin, but you can see a little shower starting to develop across Dubuque, Iowa. It'll probably turn into a thunderstorm. Right now, it's drifting to the southeast, so probably will stay south of Grant County. Temperatures seem pretty nice. I mean, generally low to mid 80s, but they feel more like the upper 80s to the middle 90s. And that's because dew point temperatures right now are right around the 70 degree mark. In fact, Platteville right now a 76 degree dew point and Lone Rock at 75. Look for a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm by tomorrow morning with the low of uh, 67. High tomorrow 83 with some off and on thunderstorm chances. That'll be the case on Friday. Again, alert days in the forecast. Hot Saturday, thunderstorm Sunday, and then a break in the heat and humidity next week. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us. We're back in 30 minutes for News 3 Now at 6. CBS Evening News is coming your way next. Stay tuned.